It seems like almost every day in the U.S. now, there's some new story about a Christian lawmaker proposing some horribly discriminatory law or prohibiting certain types of medical research or limiting reproductive health care in the name of their faith. These are all serious political issues involving religion butting its head into places that it doesn't belong, like medicine and biological science education. Recently, the Utah State School Board doubled down on their scientifically illiterate attempts to discredit evolutionary science for Utah's public school system. A lot of the recent commotion is coming from school board member Elisa Ellis, who opposes the teaching of evolution. She said, quote, These national science standards, they have little to do with science and a lot to do with what is politically expedient. There's a heavy emphasis on global warming. There's a heavy emphasis on evolution as a fact and not a theory, unquote. She also said, quote, There's differences of opinions. It doesn't mean someone is unintelligent or uninformed or belongs in a garbage can, but let's teach both sides of the issue, unquote. So right away, there's a few obvious problems with Mrs. Ellis's argument here. First and foremost, evolution is not a matter of opinions. Evolution is a demonstrable fact, with more evidence supporting it than literally any other theory devised by the scientific method. And for that matter, theories are descriptions of phenomena built around a large set of facts. Saying that something is just a theory and not a fact shows a basic ignorance of scientific principles. Someone who doesn't understand this should not be in a position of power reviewing education standards. If you think evolution is wrong, then, at best, you are uninformed. That's the literal definition of ignorance, of being uninformed. There's no inherent shame in being ignorant. We all can't know everything. I'm ignorant to a lot of aspects of geology and material science, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to just arbitrarily deny aspects of geology or material science. Now, there's also no shame in learning either. Honest skepticism and inquiry is how we all got here in the first place, with the theory of evolution underpinning our whole understanding of biology. But here's the catch. If you don't understand the evidence for evolution, or the mechanisms of evolution, even when it's explained in very simple terms, or even worse, if you outright deny everything and close your eyes and just refuse to listen and refuse to learn, that's a strong sign that you are unintelligent. Now, as for belonging in a garbage can, that's just silly. Oscar the Grouch belongs in a garbage can, but you, Mrs. Ellis, are not a Sesame Street Muppet character, so you don't belong in a garbage can. But you also don't belong on a school board either. In addition to wanting her denial of evolution installed in the Utah public school curriculum, she also wants lesson plans that cast doubt on anthropogenic climate change. I suppose it doesn't matter that the evidence for anthropogenic climate change is similarly undeniable. Mrs. Ellis is showing a pattern for ignoring facts in order to preserve her religious beliefs. From the first quote that I provided, she thinks that climate change is political. She thinks that the desire to teach the importance of climate change is political. She doesn't seem to understand that climate change is a real, existentially serious, and rapidly worsening problem that will have widespread and devastating consequences for human civilization. Instead, she thinks that climate change is a scare tactic used by environmentalists to get us to stop polluting. Because, I guess she thinks pollution is good? Maybe she thinks God will fix everything? Joining her in this climate change denial was another board member named Lisa Cummins. Mrs. Cummins is not a meteorologist, or a scientist at all for that matter. For some reason, she has a very strong belief that CO2 isn't a powerful greenhouse gas. Instead, she thinks that water vapor is the stronger greenhouse gas. 
And despite the fact that she has no evidence to support this belief, because it's demonstrably false, she's trying to get Utah's school curriculum to teach that water vapor is causing climate change. Which, uh, oh yeah, isn't caused by humans anymore either. Naturally, Mrs. Cummins is also an evolution denier. Of course she is. And when asked why she opposes teaching scientific facts, she said, quote, I am not in favor of furthering an agenda, but maybe just teaching theory and letting both sides of the argument come out, whether it's intelligent design or the Darwin origin, unquote. Folks, when your public officials and school board members say stuff like this, it's a problem. Every little point that she just made is completely wrong. She says that teaching evolution is an agenda. By whom, I wonder, and for what nefarious purposes? Is teaching evolution some kind of magic curse that removes the holy protection of a baptism? I mean, uh, what's the reasoning here? Why is this a bad thing? Is it satanic? I mean, it's just, it's paranoid and absurd. Next, she casually denigrates the value and validity of a scientific theory, and then appeals to the flaccid claim that there's a controversy within the scientific community over the legitimacy of evolution. In reality, there's no controversy within the scientific community. Evolution is rock-solid science. This whole teach-the-controversy argument is a desperate attempt to convince people to doubt evolution by lying about it. It's not a new tactic, it's not original, and it's not honest, but it is a special kind of hot-blooded deception that you only get with religious scientific denialism. Jenny Earle is yet another board member with some fun ideas, beginning with the immediate removal of any mention of the Earth being 4.6 billion years old. Apparently, the Utah Board of Education believes that its students shouldn't understand biology or geology because science is for losers or Satan or something. If you thought that this can't get worse, it does. Last July, Miss Cummins and Miss Ellis voted against updating the school system's health education standards, using their religious beliefs to prevent students from getting comprehensive sex education. They argue that teaching kids about their bodies is pornographic, and that anything besides abstinence-only education is basically the same as telling kids to go have sex like animals. They think that teaching about STDs, contraceptives, and normal sexual health care is irresponsible, even though every study that's ever been conducted on this issue has found that comprehensive sex education goes a really long way to encourage safe sex and lower the risk of spreading STDs and having teenage pregnancies. The same studies also show that abstinence-only education is, in a word, insufficient and leads to generalized ignorance about contraceptives and sexual health. And unsurprisingly, in areas where they teach abstinence only or they get as close to it as they can, you see a higher rate of spread of STDs and a higher rate of teenage pregnancies. So they're essentially advocating for policies that do the opposite of what they want because their religious beliefs are so prudish and repressive that they are unable to think rationally about this subject. Because they're in positions of power, their personal hang-ups and insecurities and religiously installed guilt gets forced on everyone, and you won't convince them that they're wrong, because they're coming from a place of pious self-righteousness. You can't reason with people like this. You can only plant the seeds of doubt and hope that one day they'll come to their senses. But unfortunately, that usually takes longer than the average service term of a Utah school board member. Fortunately for the children of Utah, and for the civilized world, these moron board members failed to get their religious propaganda stuffed into Utah's curriculum standards. Even better, both Miss Ellis and Miss Cummins are stepping down from the Utah School Board. However, even in failure, they doubled down on their lunacy. 
Mrs. Cummins said, quote, Galileo was mocked and ridiculed. If we shut down that discussion, that's not critical thinking, unquote. Mrs. Cummins is exhibiting extreme hypocrisy. Galileo was mocked and ridiculed by the church for providing scientific data that disproved religious dogma about the earth being the center of the universe. And this itself, the church's position against Galileo, was not generated with any critical thinking. Now, Mrs. Cummins finds herself endorsing a scientifically illiterate position that she did not come to with critical thinking, while painting herself as the victim of oppression akin to Galileo. It goes without saying just how delusional and hypocritical this is, and how terrifying and frustrating it is that people like this are in positions of power, able to wield some degree of influence over the education of children. This is an issue that concerns me immensely, because it's not just offensive and stupid and scientifically ignorant, it's actively harmful. Children who are miseducated about biology are unlikely to become doctors and geneticists and molecular biologists, which are the kinds of people that we really need in the modern world. Because this issue concerns me greatly, and because it seems to be on the rise in America as of late, this won't be the last time that I talk about evolution denialism creeping its way into American public life. <laughs>